What's the difference between a martial artist and a fighter? To the untrained eye, there might be no distinction, but Australian-born MMA athlete Megan Anderson begs to differ. As the former Invicta FC featherweight champion and current competitor in the UFC, Anderson has traveled the globe and journeyed through the refining fire of mental illness to get to the international stage of MMA stardom as an ambassador for both her division and her country of birth. All the while, she's played the balancing act of two personas, the martial artist and the fighter. I'm a martial artist, but I'm also a fighter. Um, and I think that there is distinct difference between the two. But I think that you kind of have to be in the sport of MMA these days. Like you can be a martial artist, but you have to have that mentality of a fighter of like, you need to go in that cage, beat the shit out of your opponent and get the job done. You can be a martial artist when you're training. That's, that's fine, like it's, it's all about the journey and everyone has their own journey. But as soon as you step in that cage, it's, you're not a martial artist anymore, you're a fighter. Where did Megan Anderson get her start? Where's her career headed? And just how good is she? Like, share, and subscribe to the Ultimate Fighting Network as we find out how good Megan Anderson actually is. Megan Anderson was born and raised on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. After a troubled experience in the military, in which she struggled with issues related to serious depression, Anderson took up boxing on a whim in order to heal from her mental illness, and through her connections with the sport, found real passion in mixed martial arts. She started training seriously in 2013 with a combination of Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, along with her boxing background. After fighting locally for a few years, Anderson moved from her native Australia to Kansas City, Missouri in 2015 to pursue her career more seriously. It was a rocky and emotional start, but Anderson found her feet as she trained harder and learned more. She's pushed through into international consciousness through her star power and still young professional record of 11 and 4, as well as a few high-profile fights under her belt. Anderson is very open about her issues with anger and depression. She recalls troubling episodes in her childhood, including throwing a table across the room in school because another student teased her. She's always had a violent streak, but she credits learning to channel that energy into combat sports with saving her life, giving her a healthy and strategic outlet for the aggression within. While the art of martial arts put her feet on the path to learning more about herself, the fighting spirit gives her a chance to pursue her bloodlust in a controlled setting. Since her emotional beginnings in the sport, Anderson has become an advocate for mental health awareness in the MMA community and beyond, taking her visibility as a role model very seriously and putting her platform to good use. Like it's a part of my life that happens and I'm no longer in that place and that's why uh, with my fight I'm actually bringing out like a, a shirt and I'm donating proceeds of the shirt to uh, Mental Health America. Um, I feel like they do an amazing job promoting mental health and, and the mental health of America and, and the community and helping people living with mental illnesses to uh, you know, help them with their needs and everyday life. So, wow, yeah. good for you. Thanks for sticking around. There's more coming. Please help support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. So, how good is Megan Anderson? Anderson is a monument in her division. At six feet tall, with a reach of 72 inches, she towers over most of the women in her division, and even some of the men. That height and reach, as well as her background in boxing, give her a definite defensive advantage and play to her strength as a striker. In interviews, Anderson has stated that she doesn't train with women, reasoning that she gets pushed farther by male training partners, and training with men allows her to avoid bad habits and pitfalls that might arise from training with women. She credits this with her ability to change up her patterns and her angles mid-fight to keep her opponents guessing, keeping them always a few steps behind. According to pundits, what you notice first about Anderson is her coordination and speed. For her height, she's very light on her feet, and her greatest skill is in her stand-up game with very accurate and effective striking. Because of her reach, she's able to keep her opponents at arm's length until she wants them to come closer, and by then, she's worn them down to the point where they're likely to get sloppy. Thanks to her inner aggression, Anderson is a particularly fierce competitor and does not stop unless you stop her first. If Anderson has one weakness, it's probably in ground and pound situations. This isn't unusual for strong stand-up fighters, but her ground game is definitely not her strongest point and it's cost her in the past. Her takedown accuracy is hit or miss, but don't be fooled. 
Once she has an opponent in her clutches, a submission is likely. It's been said of Anderson by analysts and her coaches that she's still young and very athletic and learns very quickly. Because of her remarkable story of healing, her passion for MMA is very deep and likely to push her to even greater heights. There are dozens of ways to handle inner demons, and no one way is perfect. Megan Anderson found her tactic, turned those demons into a warrior spirit, an ability to face down an opponent and not be scared because you've faced worse in your own head. It's still early days for Megan Anderson's career, with more high-profile fights rumored and possibilities galore, as well as a platform for promoting mental health. It's likely she's sticking around for a while. Everyone is so different, mm. and um, I think there is such a stigma around mental health that, um, you know, particularly as a fighter, we are seen as like invincible. Like we get in the cage and we fight, and we're supposed to be like superhero like people. And I think the more that, you know, I know Rob has spoken about it as well. Um, I think the more fighters that come out and, and talk about it, like, I feel like we really have a good voice to show people that like it is okay to not be okay. It's okay to have these feelings or to feel this way. Just remember like you aren't the only one and like there is always somebody that will be there for you. Like it is never worst case scenario. It's never as bad as you think it is. How good is Megan Anderson? Good enough to stare her demons in the face and laugh. Good enough to bring that courage into the cage and good enough to make sure that others feel less alone in their journeys as well. What do you think of Megan Anderson? How good is she? Comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Fighting Network.